Greetings. My name is Colin App, and I am one of the pastors at Pilgrim Congregational Church. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. It is a special season in the Christian year. I'm glad that you've decided to join us for worship this day. I pray that you will find this place to be a place of peace and hope, joy, and love. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here to worship with us, to sit with your doubt and ask questions, to grow and to learn, to be who God has created you to be, just as you are. Thanks for being here.
seek peace. We know that God has told us to turn our weapons of war into instruments that benefit all humanity. In the name of that child who was born long ago to become the Prince of Peace, we now light the candle of peace. Loving God, we open ourselves to you this Christmas season. As these candles are lit, light our lives with your imagination. Show us the creative power of hope. Magnify your love within us. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained, but must be shared. Help us to be peace seekers and prepare our hearts to be transformed by you so that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Welcome to Pilgrim Online Worship Service this fourth Sunday of Advent, December 20th, 2020. My name is Marcella Richardson, and I have the honor of being our liturgist this Sunday morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Sing out my soul. Sing of the holiness of God. Sing of the longing of God. Sing of God's mercies. Sing of God's healing touch. I will sing of God's love forever. Sing out my soul. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Most wondrous God, we come before you in this season of Advent to praise your holy name. We thank you for your love and your guidance. Please fill our hearts with hope, joy, and happiness as we await your return. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now please join me in the opening hymn. Please join me now in our call to confession. Let us confess our sins to the one whose mercy endures from generation to generation. God with us, even in Advent, we confess that you can seem far away. You are hidden when we need you near. In our hurt, doubt and fear, we do not try to draw closer to you. Instead, we lash out against you, our neighbor, even those we love. Forgive us, we pray, and come to save us. Let your face shine until our tears are dried, our sins are faded, and our hope is restored. After all, we belong to you, and in your hands, we can be made new. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now, friends, hear the good news. The grace of God given to us in Jesus Christ strengthens us to the end so that we may be blameless when Christ comes again. Thanks be to God who is faithful and has called us into the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hello, Advent greetings from the Divis.
Christmas family. Stella and I are going to light the candle. Tim's holding the camera. May the light of Christ shine in your home this Advent season and fill your heart with love, joy, hope, and peace. Peace be with you. Happy holidays from the Tysons. May the peace of God be with all of you, my Pilgrim family. Peace be with you and happy holidays from the Cox family. My Pilgrim friends, God's peace be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And the power of the Holy Spirit give you strength and courage. I've never had an Advent wreath before, but inspired by my friends at Pilgrim, I put this together to wish you peace, hope, and joy of the Advent season. Our scripture reading is from the Old Testament this will be from the book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 1 through 4, and verse 19 to 26. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David with my holy oil. I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also strengthens him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God and the rock of my salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, God. Good morning, Pilgrim. Well, today I'm standing in what? I'm standing in an entrance, aren't I? We have all sorts of entrances, don't we? We have ones to get into our house or our home or our apartment. We have ones to go from room to room. We have lots of doorways or entrances, don't we? So what would happen if you went to get into your house and it was locked and you weren't able to get in? What would you do then? You could knock on it and hope somebody would let you in. You could take out your key and unlock the door. Maybe you could call or text somebody if you had a phone to let you inside. Or you could wait till somebody else opened the door. Or you might leave. Or if you were really desperate, you might break a window to get in. Oh, that seems like a lot of trouble, doesn't it? In today's scripture, Gabriel comes to see Mary. 
Now we saw that happen in our Christmas pageant last week, didn't we? Calissa played Gabriel and came to announce to Mary about the birth of her upcoming baby and that she would name him Jesus and that he would grow up to tell all about the love of God and extend that invitation. Now imagine if Mary did not have her door open to God and instead had it closed and she wasn't willing to accept what God had to say. But in our scripture, we hear that Mary was open and she said, here I am, Lord, I am willing to do that. What a different story it might have been if Mary had had said no, that she didn't want to name her baby Jesus or bring him up knowing the love of God. So we have to remember that we need to keep our doors open and not be closed to God's love because that invitation is still with us. The one that Jesus sent to all of us so long ago is with us today. So let's keep our doors open to God's plan and what God wants to do in our lives. Let us pray. Dear God, it's easy to remain closed off sometimes to the things that you are calling us to do, but we know that you know what is best for us and that you love and care for us and would lead us only in the right path. Help us to keep our doors open to your love. Amen.
Our second scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here I am. The servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I don't know about you, but I've been watching a lot of Christmas movies lately. And I just have to say, right up front, I'm a little disappointed. The quantity is high. There are so many movies to choose from. The quality is low. They all have the effect of making the miracle of the season pretty mundane. Apparently, the miracle of Christmas is that hapless female character A finds true love at the local shopping mall and will never again feel ridiculed by her cruel and unusual parents. Or the classic down-on-his-luck dad spiritedly seeks after and finds the very last must-have trending toy for his child and saves Christmas morning while the proud spouse sips coffee in their red plaid pajamas. Is this what we've reduced it all to? The story we read from Luke's Gospel is the real story of Christmas. It's the reason we celebrate every year that our hearts have been filled with joy. Some of us at times have even gasped in awe and wonder because we heard and, and believed and maybe even felt in our own hearts that God was doing something in the world to make all things, all people new. All the crooked paths will be straight and the love and faithfulness of God will be established forever. Really. Truly. It's an extraordinary story. And perhaps today, just five days before Christmas, we might be in the mood for a miracle. It's the story we call the Annunciation. The word annunciate is Latin in origin, and it means simply to announce. And so in the Christian tradition, the Annunciation, the Annunciation, is to announce the good news of the Incarnation. The time has come when God will act decisively and specifically by entering our world in the form of a vulnerable little baby. 
To be clear, the Annunciation is a miracle. There's just no other way to make positive sense of it other than to say right up front, it is miraculous. We have the angel Gabriel, the proclamation of a birth of a divine child by a virgin, all things that are way beyond the normal events of our world. It is a story where the frame of our world and the frame of transcendence meet, touch, dance in wonderful, extraordinary harmony. And yet, the story also has hints of the very ordinary, too. For starters, Mary is ordinary. Now, unlike our friends in the Roman Catholic tradition, we don't talk too much about Mary as Protestants. But here it is helpful to take note of her biographical details. Mary is not a princess or a wealthy elite. She doesn't hail from priestly bloodlines or have a fancy zip code in Jerusalem, which, truth be told, even in its heyday was nothing compared to Athens or Alexandria or Rome. In her song of praise, she self-identifies as poor and lowly. She is from an ordinary, out-of-the-way place. Perhaps most striking is the most obvious. She is a she, a female, a young girl of only 15 at most. This is in a society that values men, maturity. God chooses this teenage girl precisely because she has nothing precisely because she is so ordinary. That choice, that action of God, though, is extraordinary. Mary's initial response to the angel, Gabriel, this heavenly word that seems to come upon her, is also what we might expect. Far from thinking that this is anything other than extraordinary, Mary responds with what the NRSV translates as perplexity and pondering. Throughout the history of art, various folks have tried to capture this mysterious scene. There are many Annunciation paintings you could look at and choose from, just as there are many theologians who have debated how to interpret this text, what to do with Mary, I chose Tanner's version for the YouTube cover today because I think it does a good job of communicating Mary's mixed response. She is cautious, yet not so scared as to flee out of the room or run away. Wary, yet also curious, I think. In any respect, we can be sure that Mary is at least a little afraid because the second thing the angel says is, be not afraid. And after these words, she responds with a question, which again, is what we would expect. Because what, angel, what Gabriel is talking about doesn't make any sense. How can it be that a virgin should give birth to any child, let alone a child that would be a messianic king, Hence this miracle, which we cannot reasonably and certainly not rationally explain. It's sort of just placed right in our laps, put almost at the very center of our Christian story. Upon reflecting on this story, on the Annunciation, what stands out to me, to be honest, is not the miracle of the virgin birth. It is the way in which God breaks into our world. The God beyond our grasp, beyond what we can imagine or even think, the God that defies our language and all of our attempts at categorization, chooses to come in a scandalously specific 
time and place comes at a particular moment in human history, chooses to come in the most vulnerable, fragile, intimate of ways, regardless of what you may believe or not believe about the virgin birth, this is a miracle of particularity. This is a miracle of vulnerability. When we read and tell this story every year, I fear, as your pastor, that we get hung up on the nature of Mary's virginity. We ask these critical questions of the text, which we are entitled to do. Did it really happen like that? Luke surely can't expect me to believe an extraordinary thing like that, can he? The true miracle, the point that Luke is beginning his gospel with, is the larger movement of God in history. That is to say, it is God who acts. It is God who moves towards us first, not us towards God. God comes to us, ordinary people, in the most vulnerable and particular way possible. And so today, we might be reorientated around this particularity as we journey through Advent. We might begin to expect that God will burst into our ordinary lives, not someday in the future or when we die, right now, in Advent, with us here. To believe that such a thing is possible, I would argue, is no more scandalous than to believe and take seriously the Annunciation. And through this reorientation, we begin to see not only how God moves in our lives, but we gain a better understanding of what it means to be human in relationship with this God. What becomes strikingly apparent through this Annunciation text, through Advent, is that we are pretty powerless. Mary cannot understand, let alone conceive, of the divine child without God's help. Remember, she is just a young, ordinary girl. The pandemic also has a way of reinforcing our powerlessness for us. We can't stop others, our loved ones, even ourselves from getting sick and perhaps dying. And though we wear masks and wash our hands and use sanitizer and stay away from other people and avoid our workplaces as much as possible and all the rest of it, we could still get COVID. We could still perish. And we might not even be able to change someone's minds about the facts concerning the pandemic, and that's with a mountain of empirical evidence at our disposal. In the end, we cannot fully control how long we will live. We cannot change anyone's mind. We can just barely control the circumstances of our daily lives, our checkbooks, our bodies. And that's on our best days. In light of that, Mary's final response is all the more striking. After all that the angel Gabriel has said, all the amazing out of this world, are you kidding me? things. Mary's response is perhaps the most extraordinary. Here I am. Here I am. I doubt Mary comprehends the full reality of what Gabriel is saying to her. How could she? And yet she is also not a passive recipient. This isn't something that just merely happens to her. She responds actively, willingly, and this story unfolds before her. We too can participate in God's story for our lives. We do so by accepting 
the reality of our powerlessness. We do so by embracing our ordinariness, our deficiencies, our lack of control. We trust in the power of God to do what we cannot, to make a way out of no way, to move towards us when we are stuck in place. We learn to accept this mysterious grace that God continues to offer us day in and day out and thereby however slowly it may take and it is normally quite slow we come to realize that the center of our lives is not ourselves it is God and to live with such an awareness such an openness to God's movement and presence and power in our lives changes, well, it changes everything from ordinary to extraordinary. And that is a miracle worth celebrating. In the name of the triune God, amen. I invite you now to join me in prayer. You are welcome to share your prayer joys and concerns online during the service in the chat. Submit them through our website or contact a deacon for healing prayer by phone. Please pray with me. Loving God, as we approach the day of Christ's birth, 
Help us to throw wide the doors of our hearts in preparation. Help us to sense the importance of what happened so long ago when Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel. To remember the words of the angels and the prophets and the teachers of old and to celebrate all the promises that you made through them. Help us to take firm hold of the meaning of all these things and to know in the depths of our being that even now you are seeking to work in us and through us to fulfill the promises you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we continue in this Advent season, may we pause often and give thanks for your amazing love. May we be mindful that during this season, there are so many that are hurting. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see what you see and give us the courage to step out and demonstrate your love in our actions and words. We pray, O oh God, for those in need around us, for those who need a second birth, for those who need a tender touch and a healing word, for the children of our world and all those of tender faith, all those who have no home to call their home, all those who are hungry and thirsty. Bless, we pray, the innocent of the earth and all those who trust in you. Bless the humble and the powerless and bring down from their thrones those who are full of pride and arrogance and those who are indifferent. Lord, in your loving grace, hear our prayer. Bless, we pray to each special one we name before you now. Carol's friend, Francine, Pat's sister, Janet, Sally's friend, Usama, Candace's friend, Shaw, Mary, Willie Mae. Lord, in your healing power, hear our prayer. Lord, may this Christmas season be for us and for those around us a season of healing. May it be a season of hope and of love and of joy. May it be a time of true sharing and of rejoicing in all the earth. We ask these things, O oh God, with hope and praise in our hearts, our minds, and our souls, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer as we join together in community to pray the prayer your Son taught us, each in the words most meaningful to us as individuals. Our Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in our service that we offer to God a portion of what God has given to us. Today we are collecting for Christmas Fund Veterans of the Cross. Each year, Pilgrim collects this special offering as a way to support active and retired clergy and lay leaders of the UCC who work at or have retired from churches that struggle to support them financially. This offering provides emergency grants, supplements retirement annuities, helps with health care premiums, and gives thank you checks to the lowest income retirees. These financial needs have increased dramatically due to COVID-19. You are invited to give to Pilgrim 
Congregational Church and the Christmas Fund using any of these methods. Online at www.pilgrimoakpark.org. Please select Giving from the menu or click the Give to Pilgrim button via the Tidely app, which you can download from your phone's app store. You can text the word GIVE to 833-721-1098, or you can mail a check. At this time, we ask that you give generously as you are able. grace. Accept this offering as a token of our abiding love. Use it to bring peace, justice, and comfort to all the world. Amen. And now it is our time of announcements. Monday, December 21st, is the winter solstice, which is also known as the longest night. As is our pilgrim tradition, we will have the opportunity to come together in a ritual to help us name the pain and loss we've known this year, although this year we will be gathering virtually. We have co-sponsored an online event with the many, and we hope to see you there. It begins at 8 p.m. this Monday evening, and because of the nature of the event, you have to pre-register in advance in order to participate. The link to register is on our website on the front page and it's on the in the what's happening at Pilgrim email that you received last week. This service feels more relevant this year than ever so please take a moment to sign up today so that you can join us. Our Christmas Eve celebration will also be somewhat different this year due to COVID safety precautions, and we will have two events. Weather permitting, we plan to gather at 4.30 p.m. on Thursday for a short illumination parade of lights. Scripture and sounds in the search of Christ the child. Please meet in the front of the church, and if you have a battery-operated light or lantern, small drums or bells, please bring them along. And please also bring a food donation to lay at the manger on the front lawn in our newly installed blessing box. Then at 7 p.m., please tune in to our YouTube channel to join in a Christmas Eve service of lessons and carols. More information and the link to the online 7 p.m. service can be found on our website. The new year is almost upon us and there are several engaging programs that will be starting in January that require advanced registration. So you'll want to check them out now, even though we're still in December. 
Starting on Sunday evening, January 10th, Pastor Colin and Cleo Hagen will be leading a five-week Zoom discussion series called Who is My Neighbor? What the Bible Says About Refugees. Information on the series and the registration link are on the website and in the What's Happening at Pilgrim weekly email. Also beginning in January, on Friday, January 8th, I will be leading a six-week Bible study on the Gospel of Mark from noon to 1 p.m. via Zoom. If you're interested in participating, please email me today so that I can order a study guide for you. And the cost of that guide is $7. Looking further ahead in January, please mark your calendar to join us for the All Church Annual Business Meeting, also via Zoom, on Saturday, January 23rd from 9 to 11 a.m. Look for details on the website and in the What's Happening at Pilgrim email. I look forward to seeing many of you after worship today for virtual fellowship hour, and again on Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. for virtual evening prayer. The Zoom links are available on our website. And now, please join me in singing our closing hymn. My sisters and brothers, may the peace of God be with you now. May the joy of God carry you this day. Be courageous. Remember who you are. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.